Abby Martin sues the state of Georgia over law requiring a Pledge of Allegiance to Israel. So, after refusing to sign a Pledge of Allegiance to the state of Israel, the state of Georgia shut down a media literacy conference featuring journalist and filmmaker Abby Martin at Georgia Southern University. Martha, uh, sorry, Martin has recently released a documentary critical of the Israeli government called Gaza Fights for Freedom, which is an excellent documentary. We've interviewed Abby Martin and Mike Preisner about the documentary. It is fantastic. Check it out. I can't speak highly enough of it. Uh, so now she is suing the yeah. state, claiming the decision is a violation of the First Amendment, along with the Council on American-Islamic Relations, uh, CAIR, or CARE, uh, and the Partnership for Civil Justice Fund, PCJF. Today, she filed a federal free speech lawsuit against the university system of Georgia. Uh, Martin is dismayed by the university's decision, quote, the censorship of my talk based on forced compliance to anti-BDS laws in Georgia is just one level of nationwide campaign to protect Israel from the grassroots pressure. We must stand firmly opposed to these efforts and not cower in fear of these blatant violations of free speech. She's absolutely right. There isn't really a whole lot to say about this. This is thought crime, right? This is the United States government via the states coercing people into signing allegiances pledges of allegiance to a foreign nation, right? This is a point that we make all the time. In New York, Cuomo proposed boycotting Pittsburgh or Philadelphia because they, they did not have a, a, a no plastic straws ordinance. So because of plastic straws, you can boycott a different state in this country. But if you want to well, you, well, you participate... Can't. You, can't, you can't do it because it didn't work. Yeah. Well, it didn't work, but yeah. he's allowed to. He's allowed to attempt to boycott mm -hmm. a different state. Yeah. But you can't publicly decide that you want to boycott the nation state of Israel, right? The country, the sovereign, not America country. Somehow that is not allowable. Somehow that is the kind of thing that will prevent you from being able to speak at a public university if you fail to sign that oath, that pledge of allegiance to a different country. This is crazy. And I think that we, when we first covered this, like I think we were saying, why doesn't she sue? She should sue over this. This seems ridiculous. These laws in general have always been ridiculous. Exactly what Paul said. These are thought crime laws. This is the, and Paul's exactly right. Like Cuomo at least like when he did that, even though it failed because you're not, states aren't allowed to interfere with the interstate commerce of each other. But he would like if if the same rules that apply to the BDS movement applied to what Cuomo did, Cuomo would uh, have to like go to jail more or less, or he just wouldn't be able to, or he would be forcefully stopped. Yeah, forced to so, yeah. step down, yeah, maybe forced, forced to, down. to resign. Yeah. So this is, and again, Israel's our client state. Like again, Israel likes to pretend to be independent and on their own, but without the U.S., they would collapse basically immediately hell they have medicare for all they have, right that's right we're paying them yeah so we they can, can have they, medicare yeah, for they all. got medicare for yeah. all and we can't so i mean that, that, that's the system we live in and look i can't forget this either but in the older studio before we moved here you know myself and eric unger we actually interviewed abby martin we actually saw her new uh, documentary film that came out about what's happening in gaza what's happening in the west bank People need to know what's happening. And the United States, our government, is turning a blind eye to it. In fact, they know what's going on. Do you want to know who doesn't know what's going on? The people around the world. We don't know what's happening in the West Bank and Gaza. But there's clear examples of war crime. Israel right now, being on a par side state that it is, it's committing war crimes. We're treating people in the West Bank and Gaza less than animals. It's like they don't even exist. And yet, here in the United States, the quote-unquote bastion of freedom and liberty and democracy... Abby Martin is not allowed to speak, but yet she's being told that she has to make a pledge of allegiance to Israel. In what world does that sound like a bastion of democracy and freedom? In what world does it sound like that's something a free democracy does? No. No, this is stupid. This is not only stupid and insulting, but this is downright frightening. Why? Why should anyone in their right mind do that? Would we, I don't know, do a pledge of allegiance to maybe the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany? I mean, what's next? Who else do we got to pledge allegiance to just so that we don't offend anyone? Look, well, and they have so, a nice little racket going on, right? Yeah. So the, the, the way it works is basically, oh, 
the humane position is, you know, unquestioning and undying support for the state of Israel because, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, somebody else is attacking them, I guess. Uh, well, who's the, attacking that's them? That's what it is. The Palestinians. Some, some, some that's what it is. a stone in a tank? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's a devastating attack. And Abrams' tank cannot withstand right. so a stone from yeah. a little right. kid so because who's dying of starvation. Way, because they frame it that way, you can't come in with information that says, hey— it doesn't look like it's a human shield situation. It looks like the oppressor here is the one that's receiving $11 million a day in weapons from America. Seems like Israel is the oppressor here. They don't want that information out, right? So you, they need people to sign this pledge that says, oh, I agree with the, with the Israel is the one that's being oppressed and they deserve our undying support. They need that acquiescence uh, so that you don't go out there and start spreading real information about the fact that the real humanitarian crisis in the region is with the ones that you are saying are the oppressors. The Palestinian people are the ones who are occupied. They're an occupied people group. They have every right to defend themselves. Yeah. And if you go out and, and spread that message, you are somehow smeared as the one who does not fight for human freedoms, human rights. Yes. And it's, it's, it flips the whole thing on its head. It's really disingenuous. It's very disheartening. So the ironic thing on top of this is I thought that this is Georgia. Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, is a Republican state, right? Mm -hmm. Like Texas, which has the same law. I thought that they were big on uh, small government. Oh, right. No, that's only if it's uh, if it's only con if it's convenient for them. It's, it's, if Don't it's forget convenient, freedom of speech. And the freedom of speech. But only if it's convenient. We shouldn't be talking about these things unless it's not convenient. Then we go. I also find it very funny in the whole thing, and just an extra level, like on top of all this level of, of absurdity, that it's mainly red states. It's blue states. But it's a lot of red states that are like, you know, this free speech thing, this, you know, like you ask people in Georgia, hey, can we do something about guns? Well, obviously most people would say, yeah, we should probably do something. Because, you know, 95% of Americans want to do something about that. But if you ask the legislature, it's, well, you know, it's the Second Amendment. Second Amendment is law written by God and watered sacrosanct. by Jesus. It would be sacrosanct yeah. to do anything about it. But then you go, hey, you know, we got this First Amendment. No, it just, it, it loopholes. We can, you know, we don't need it all that much. It's fine. So I just want to point out that there's that additional level of hypocrisy in this. I'm really happy that Abby Martin is doing this because I expect that as long as she has uh, a quality uh, law firm and a law team for this, I don't see any reason she would lose this, and this will set precedent. More importantly, I think as a final note for the story, Abby Martin, I don't know if you'll see this video clip or not, but you have to keep on fighting this because your documentary was able to give truth to power and really show people what's going on. You know, Watching that, when myself and Eric Unger had the opportunity to interview you, it was really eye-opening to see what's happening there. And we as independent journalists, as people who are informing people, we need to inform people what's going on and let them know about corruption and injustice because now more than ever, we need independent media to bring truth to power so that we can all do what we can to build a better future.